Beim heutigen Stande der Wissenschaft und der Technik ist der Bau von Maschinen möglich, die höher steigen können, als die Erdatmosphäre reicht. Bei weiterer Vervollkommnung vermögen diese Maschinen derartige Geschwindigkeiten zu erreichen, dass sie im Äderraum sich selbst überlassen, nicht auf die Erdoberfläche zurückfallen müssen und sogar imstande sind, den Anziehungsbereich der Erde zu verlassen. Ich habe dann mir dieses Buch beschafft und war entsetzt, dass es voller mathematischer Formeln war. Ich fing an zu studieren und hatte nichts zu bieten als eine erhebliche Begeisterung für die Astronautik. Many people thought we were crazy and we were wasting our time, but von Braun liked to say, a person is just a crackpot until he hits the jackpot. I think it's probably a, basically a romantic drive that motivated me. But with romanticism alone, you don't build these things. They're pretty demanding with respect to perfection. They're pretty unforgiving, too. When I got to Peenemünde in 1940, the engine didn't work too well. Whenever we pushed the start button, normally the thing blew up. This experience was very unique. We went just above the atmosphere at a maximum altitude of 83 kilometers and finally proved that our concepts were realistic. We immediately had the feeling that we opened the door into a, a big future and that just about logically everything else uh, might follow out of that for going into real interplanetary space. We also talked about the potential future. I personally was really influenced by the book that Professor Obert had written, where he uh, talked already in those days about much, much more advanced activities than just launching V2s. He talked already about space stations. He talked about individuals floating around in free outer space. And uh, ever once in a while, we talked about these things. I personally think this was the beginning of the present day space age.
Denn so wird zeigen, soll er vor sich herdragen und wir werden in unserem Zeichen wieder siegen. Here, in this hell, I thought that my life had passed and that the execution had taken place and that I was in hell. No. We knew, I knew, and most of the people knew the name von Braun. He was, a, a, in my opinion, a son of a bitch. Of course. Yes. He had brains, he was a great man, he had something in his head, but he didn't care about uh, what could happen to the, the poor guys who were there. He saw just the final result. I remember I was a very young man in Germany and I was so busy with my rockets that maybe in retrospect I sometimes wonder whether I shouldn't have worried a little more about some of these aspects and as I grew older, of course, and uh, saw the ramifications, of course, also the suffering that's involved. You uh, re rethink some of these things. On the other hand, I do not believe uh, that uh, I'm all alone in this respect because I think uh, the early pioneers in aviation probably uh, went to exactly the same thing. They wanted to fly and uh, they tried to find the money wherever they could get it to do these things.
That should never have happened. We built our we built our rocket to hit the <coughs> to, to hit the mo hit the moon, but not to hit other people. Now, we could very well have stayed and just waited for the Russian army to come in, but we elected to move west instead and get rolled over by the American army because we wanted to ultimately wind up in America. Our intelligence sources had told us of the role Dr. Von Braun and his army superior, General Dornberger, had played in the development of the V-2 program. I believe that the brains of these men, if we could find them, must be put to work on behalf of the United States. After all, they were the world's only experienced missile team. This was the beginning of Operation Paperclip. The President and the Congress were petitioned to return these so-called enemy aliens to Germany post-haste. But the United States had much to learn about rocket. These men, dedicated and experienced, made very fine teachers. So we stood firm. We didn't even know whether they would stay in this country. Technically, they were brought over as prisoners of war. And that was their status when I met Von Brown at Fort Bliss. Our rooms were quite primitive, but we came from war-torn Germany, and for us everything was freedom and <laughs> fine. 